If you're anything like me, God can be mysterious and oftentimes confusing. Our life most often ends up looking something like this. God is up here. We're down here. And what we experience is just a great barrier between the two of us. So much so that we may often go through our lives thinking that God's not even there. <laughs> or maybe if he is there, certainly having no idea how in the world we would possibly connect with him. So what do we do? Oftentimes, what we'll do is we'll just say, forget God. <laughs> I'll just focus on myself. I'll live for me, the big I. <laughs> the problem with that, though, is if you're anything like me, I let myself down way too many times. I lean on myself and end up frustrated, end up falling flat on my face. And when I'm pausing, and I'm honest with myself, I get discouraged thinking about the possibility that there's nothing greater to this life than just me. I desire for there to be something more. And if you're honest with yourself, you probably do too. So then we try to get to God. <laughs> maybe we go to church, maybe we pray. But that honestly usually just ends up having like barriers of its own because how much is enough? What's good enough? And here I am trying to reach the God of the universe who's supposed to be perfect and holy, and here I am offering up just a little bit that I have to give. That ends up in frustration. And it doesn't work for me either. Well, God gave us an idea of what it looks like to connect with him and how it's supposed to happen. In the book of Romans... There's this passage that talks about how we can connect with God. And it says this, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's take a look at that first line. For the wages of sin is death. What's a wage? That's right. It's what you earn. If you work at McDonald's, you're going to earn minimum wage. It's what you do to get something. Well, what about that second word, sin? What is that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Falling short, uh, messing up. Really, what it means is that we miss the mark. There's a perfect, holy God, and all of us go our own independent, selfish ways. That's what this I stands for. And we fall short of God's standard of perfection. We're selfish. We're self-centered. Um, we don't love. Whatever it may be, all of us sin and fall short of God's glory. And what we earn because of that sin, because of our shortcomings, and because of our falling short and missing the mark, is death. Not just a physical death, but a spiritual death. Spiritual separation from God. That's why God seems far. It's not because God is distant. It's because of our own sin. We're the reasons that God isn't closer to us. So this is our reality, that we are sinful, and what we have earned because of that is separation from God. But let's look at the second line. The gift of God is eternal life. Well, for starters, how is a gift different than a wage? 
That's right. A wage is something you earn, but the gift is something that you can't earn. In fact, it's only received. It has to be given by someone else to you. And what is the gift that God is giving us? That's right, it's eternal life. What do you think eternal life is? Yeah, it's not just a life that we get one day when we get to heaven, or that we even get into heaven. I think that it'd probably be best described as life to the full that starts now and cannot be taken away. It's what we're looking for. It is true life. It is satisfaction. It is joy. It is something that is bigger than our circumstances, something that's eternal, something that is so good, no matter what may happen to us, it can't steal away this eternal life. And that is exactly what God is giving to us. But how? How does he give that to us? Well, let's look at the third line. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the gift right here. It's Jesus, his own son. While the wage that we deserve because of our sin was death, God has given us eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, who died on a cross in our place. Death was what was deserved. And someone had to pay that death penalty. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. We didn't deserve it. It's a gift. It wasn't easy. In fact, it pained Jesus and pained God to the core. But it's the love that God had for us that sent Jesus to the cross to die for our sins so that God could reach down to us. You know, as we go through our day-to-day -day lives, many of us are here, just living for ourselves, ignoring God. Some of us are here, trying our best to get to God, but it's still our efforts and it's falling short. There's a third option. The gift that God offers to us. The gift of Jesus, whose death is enough to cover our sin and to give us a relationship with God. Through Jesus, we can connect and have a relationship we were meant to have and the eternal life and joy and satisfaction that's found in Him. So where are you out of these three X's? Where are you living right now? And where would you like to be? You know, I can tell you that this idea of eternal life doesn't start with just receiving the gift. It's as my teacher says, if someone were to give you a bicycle, it would be foolish to say thank you and just leave it in the garage and never use it. No, you want to ride that bike. You want to experience the joy that it can bring. You want to take care of it, to oil it, to wash it, that it continues to shine and bring happiness and joy to your life. And guess what? The same is true in a relationship with God. God offers this gift of eternal life, and our choice is to receive it. And when we receive it, to enjoy it, to live it, to experience it, to make the most of it. Would you like to receive that gift of eternal life right now? If so, you can pray with me and ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior and Lord and to tell God that you receive the gift of his Son and his death on the cross as a payment for your sins. Let's pray together.